Okay, it's recording. Hi, Rick. <laughs> Hi, I'm Katie. Hi. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Good. So, for all of our listeners out there, we have our Katie Brown here with us today. And just like always, before I get into her and the amazing project that she is going to be talking about today, uh, we're going to start with a little meditation. And today, I thought we could do some womb breathing, just because, as you'll find out shortly, we are really going to address our quote unquote down there area and um, all the controversy that is around that very sacred place that us women hold. And our wombs are our, our source, it's where life is born, it's where life is given, and it's also our energy center in many different traditions. It's also the power center for the men. And when I say power, I mean in a source of vitality power. It's not like empowerment, but this place where we, um, we source our vitality and our creativity and sort of life force. So I'll invite everyone to close their eyes if they're doing an activity that, if you're doing an activity that you can stop doing and join us, if you're driving or doing something that you can't, that's okay. You can still sort of just breathe with us. So for the rest of us, please stop what you're doing and close your eyes. And if you can, you can even place your hands over top of your womb space. And just before you start breathing into that space, feel how that is for you to have your hands there. What comes up for you when you have your hands there? I know for me, it's a really loaded space with um, the issues that I have. I've mentioned before that I have endometriosis and I've had a lot of sexual trauma in my life. So just notice it doesn't have to be about the trauma either. It could feel really good to have your hands there and to be nourishing yourself and, and really paying attention to this really sacred place. And so as your hands are there, just notice what comes up. And we'll start to take some nice deep breaths. So we call these sipping breaths. So literally it's going to be like you're sipping through a straw through your mouth. And we'll take five breaths like this. And then you can inhale or exhale through your nose or through your mouth, whatever feels most resonant to you. So as you, before we start, I'll just explain a little bit more about this sipping. So the sipping is literally as if you're sipping from the pool of vitality, as if you had a beautiful pool in front of you or whatever visualization works for you of this life force that is all around us, that is also within us. And we're drawing that deep into our womb. So we'll empty our air all together, push all the air out with a big exhale. And we'll start sipping in through the mouth. Four more, just like that. Deep into the womb space. Drawing in. Vitality, healing, whatever it is you would like to cultivate for your womb. On the exhale, you can just surrender into what you're cultivating. One more. Hmm. Good. And just really feel that and feel what that was like for you to really tap into pleasure and tap into sensuality as you're breathing into your womb. Good. And you can allow the eyes to open. So our womb space, even if you don't have a uterus, that you still have a womb. It's still your, still the life still that life force source there. So that's a practice that you can do anytime. It's great to do with the full moon and the new moon, just honoring how our bodies synchronize with those cycles. And yeah, just offer that practice to you to be able to use whenever it feels good for you. So 
Moving on though, we have an amazing guest today and her name is Arkady Brown. She's a photographer and a lover of life and of the human form. And because she's a lover of the human form, kind of is why she's a photographer. So her photography is in fine art boudoir and her boudoir shoots are done mostly nude. And she's created this amazing project, which we're going to talk about today, called the Volva Art Project, which has been getting a lot of controversy as, we, as we've been creating, with, creating it. And I've been a little bit of a support for Arcady with this project in different ways, and because um, I think it's such a beautiful thing to pay attention to, to recognize, to honor. And the reason why earlier I said our down there area is because... One of the reasons I said that is because we have all of these different names for our vulvas, for our area that is, makes us a woman. You know, this is a very sacred place. It's where life comes out of. It's, we bleed from here. There's just so many amazing things that happen. And Arcady has taken it upon herself to bring this into awareness and bring this into our communities and into women's lives that this is a beautiful thing instead of all of these other things that are talked about in a way that need to be kept secret or that it's not that it's ugly or disgusting or, and all of the issues that women have with this area to bringing those into the light so just i love i'm loving working with you on this project and i just love to welcome you Deep, deep welcome today. Thank you so much for having me. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an honor. <laughs> Is there anything else that you'd like to mention about your work and what you do before we dive into the project? Nope, I think you summed it up perfectly. Great. So the Volvo Art Project, is what it's called and we're mm -hmm. gonna post all of the links and everything and we're gonna talk a little bit about how you can get involved and support it at the end. But I'd love to start a little bit with your story, Arcady, and um, why you kind of moved into this, like what, ha what has happened to you in, in your past that has inspired you to be a part of this mm -hmm. today? So like you said, I'm a fine art boudoir photographer and what led me to do that was dealing with my own body shame mm -hmm. and, um, and seeing, you know, Instagram photography, all these different types of photography that portrayed like this certain type of woman and I didn't see myself in that, I didn't see other women. And having struggled from eating disorders, I, I feel like you know, I wanted to represent women with curves and different body types. And so that led me to doing fine art boudoir photography. And then it was two women that really hit the nail on the head to drive me to do this project. One woman I photographed she was 40 and she said that she hadn't looked at her vulva. She, the first time she looked at her vulva was she was 38. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time she looked at it and the first time she started masturbating. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of, it made me kind of sad. It was, in, it was very humbling, but it was like, wow, this is still happening. Women in our society are still not aware of what they look like, of this part of our body because we've been told not to open our legs and look. And then there was another woman, complete polar opposite, that said, I would love to have my pussy photographed. I was like, wow, like that's powerful. Like, two, and this all happened within a week of each other. And it was very like, it just made me start questioning things and it made me start analyzing, well, what do I think about my vulva? What have I learned about it? And, and then I started asking other women, what do you think about the idea of having your vulva photographed? And I got a lot of women saying, what? And some saying, hell yes. And, and it just, I just finally said, this needs to happen. And at the same time, I watched the documentary Embrace, which I think everybody should watch. Mm -hmm. And that documentary really inspired me to really, like, this project has to happen. Because mm -hmm. that documentary talks a lot about, like, labiaplasty. And so those three things combined with my own background just is what launched the project. And I put an ask on Facebook. And within a week, I had 30 women I've never met <laughs> contact me saying, I want to be a part of your project. So I knew that I knew that, especially in our political climate, I knew that this was so needed and these women were just waiting for someone to ask. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and the Volvo Art Project was born. Yeah, beautiful. Um, I'd love to hear your words around, you, you mentioned that you had eating disorder and I'd love to hear, because I really feel like the more vulnerable parts of ourselves are so connected to our overall body image. Mm -hmm. And so you mentioned that you have come from a background of 
eating disorders. And I think in our conversations before, you mentioned body dysmorphia as well. And I'd just love to hear your thoughts on how that is linked to sort of shaming these other parts of ourselves. Exactly. Well, I think, um, you know, as a young girl, if we are not taught that our vulva is beautiful and, and all these amazing things about it that, you know, like I, I was never taught anything about it. And it's, I don't blame my mother for anything, but it's generational, right? Mm -hmm. And so I never saw that part of my body, which is the most sacred part of our body as beautiful. Um, and you know, all these different things. Instead, I saw it as it looks weird. It smells, it bleeds, you know, one lip is longer than the other. And I didn't know what I was looking at. And so right there, that set me kind of not to love my body from the get go. Right. And I think a lot of women are like that. And so you know, instead I saw my mother, you know, get plastic surgery or dieting. And so I grew up not loving my body just by uh, watching my mother and her actions. And so I know when I was younger in middle school, I didn't think I was fat, but it was, it was a control thing, right? And I was bulimic, I was anorexic. And those types of things always stay with you. Like, unfortunately, it always stays with you, even if you think you're better. And, um, you know, it wasn't until I started playing roller derby where... My, wow, my body is powerful. My body is accepted in the size that it is because roller derby encompasses all different shapes and sizes of women. But, um, you know, very easily the eating disorder comes back because you start comparing yourself to other women. And, and it did for me when I lived in Pennsylvania and it came back hardcore. I was a vegan, but more likely I was anorexic mm -hmm. and my body shut down on me. And, you know, just, it's just when I reflect back, you know, I, I do have body dysmorphia, and I think a lot of women do, because what we see in the mirror, it's the same thing with photography. Like, when I take a picture of a woman, it's really hard to let go of that control of how you see yourself, because I am showing you how I see you, mm -hmm. and that's really hard. And that's, I mean, I suffer from the same thing when other people take photos of me. So I think that, um, I think my background and body dysmorphia is something that a lot of women can relate to. And, mm -hmm. and I, I started the boudoir photography as a healing thing for myself, but it's a healing thing for the women as well. And when another woman lets their guard down for basically a stranger and allows, allows me to see them in the most vulnerable state and to capture the beauty, how I see it, you can't help but be healed yourself. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's kind of how my background ties into what I do. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. And I've had the pleasure of seeing some of our Katie's um, photos of these women that she's shooting. And they're so, they're just different. I have to say they're different from any other boudoir shot where it really does feel like you're honoring the body versus trying to look sexy or trying to make your body look a certain way. It really yeah. looks like it's it's like, okay, let's just love and honor mm -hmm. the way our bodies are and feel sexy and yeah. feel beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think that, you know, there are a lot of photographers out there who might tell a woman, look, let's look sexy, make this face. And for me, while those images are sexy, oh, they yeah. are beautiful, mm -hmm. but it's the way that I do it. It's all about letting the woman close her eyes and just letting her naturally touch her body. Like how often does someone allow you that space to touch your body in a sensual way? You know, mm -hmm. and just you and the camera. And I'm not looking at you sexually. I'm not looking at you judgingly. I am, my camera and I are looking at you lovingly while you love your body. Mm -hmm. And so it's all about the breathing and the sensuality. And that is what creates the sensual sexiness of the image because it's mm -hmm. real, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so for those of our, our listeners, I know that um, the word body dysmorphia isn't necessarily used widely. I feel like it's kind of more of like a, a term a psychologist would use. And so mm -hmm. can you explain in your, in your own experience about what body dysmorphia is for you? Because I, we've talked about it a little bit on our show and I, and I feel like it's a little bit different for everyone and the way they experience it. Mm -hmm. I'd love to hear what your experience is with that. Totally. And by no means do I know the clinical definition, but, right. um, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's when I look in the mirror, it's what I see. I see, you know, I'm learning through photography to love my parts, but I still see, oh, I have a Buddha belly. Oh, I have cellulite. Oh, I'm losing muscle mass because I don't play roller derby anymore. All these different things that I judge and I think are worse than they really are. But yet my partner who is incredibly loving and supportive just sees beauty and 
femininity and curves. And I think that's what probably everybody around me sees. And, um, and I, you know, I have a really hard time when another woman views her images that I've taken of her. And I think it's the most gorgeous photo, but her mm -hmm. eyes go right to a saddlebag that I don't even see. Mm -hmm. And so I see it in all the women that I photograph and it's a very emotional thing because it's triggering for me. And you know, all the, so I just think it's, I think it literally is body dysmorphia it is how we see ourselves and it doesn't match what others see in us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I mean, I even, you know, I'm still, I think a lot of us women still are working on certain things. And I know that when I'm not taking care of myself and loving myself with my, you know, food that I'm eating, with my exercise, with my health, my general health, mm -hmm. that that stuff comes up even more. Oh. And it can be even more challenging to um, love ourselves just the way we are, you know, mm -hmm. and it's such a powerful practice, that body, body love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> stuff. being aware of it, being aware. Yeah, yeah. So the Vulva Art Project, let's dive into this. I'd okay. love to talk a little bit about the controversy that is coming up around it and how the challenges you've been facing. Um, and I think that'll nicely lead us into some of the other topics as to why this project is so important. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's controversy in the name alone, the Vulva Art Project. I mean, how often do we use that word, right? And I am having a really hard time sharing it on social media because I've had people tell me, I don't want to, I don't want to be associated with that word because I don't want my conservative friends and networking people to see that word and think I'm associated with that. I'm like, you do realize you have a vulva, right? Mm -hmm. So if that alone has been a whole new type of shaming because again, we don't call it vulva and some people don't call it pussy or yoni. They call it down there or something else that doesn't even reference what it is. And it's just amazing that they don't want to be associated with it. So for me, that's been a really emotional kind of thing to realize. And on top of that, it's been hard, incredibly hard. Living in Portland, Oregon, you would think it's easy to find a space that would be like, oh yes, I want to show this. It has been the most controversial thing for me to get in front of people. I have reached out to all sorts of galleries. I have reached out to LGTB communities. Um, one really big one here in Portland that I thought would be supportive told me it's too controversial for them to show. I have, you know, I was so close to having it shown at a community college here and they were so supportive and they were excited and then nothing, like it just dropped off. And so it's been, it's been really emotional because this is so needed. Mm -hmm. And I, we, I live in a pretty liberal area, mm -hmm. but um, it's not, it's not, you know, I mean, when people hear about the project, they're like, yeah, that's amazing. Can I show it? Well, no. <laughs> yeah. little, I, I've even had, I was applying for, I was going to apply for a grant for the project, an art grant. And they told me, well, this is a pretty sexual project. I'm like, this is not supposed to be sexual. Why does the vulva have to be sexual? Why can't it just be sacred? And this is the problem. This is why I'm doing the project because it is only seen as sexual, therefore controversial. Right. If we saw it for what it is, the birthplace of humankind, we wouldn't, it wouldn't be this, you know, so controversial. So it's just, it's just been really shocking actually. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, and can let's let's uh, because I, I don't think we've actually said exactly what's happening. What okay. what is happening with the project? So the project itself. So I have over forty women that I'm photographing their vulvas. Um, hopefully, the images will be eight by tens, just full vulva eight by ten image. And um, the goal is to do a reveal. Um, hopefully, at least more than one night um, where all the images will be shown um, to an audience and there'll be a documentary and all these different things. And, um, and right now the project, we just finished our third or fourth session this past weekend. So I have photographed almost 30 women so far and um, women are sharing, there's women that don't even know me are sharing the most amazing traumatizing stories. It's been a very emotional roller coaster for me in a really positive way and um 
it's just amazing to see how this is already healing women. And I, mm-hmm. I had no idea it was going to be this powerful. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. kind of where the project's at. Yeah. And just so people know, so I stepped on board with the project as um, the helping and supporting women with trauma therapy. And I was all on board. I was going to, I was going to be photographed and I was all ready. And another layer of my own sexual trauma came up through therapy. And I talked to my therapist about it, like, Hey, I'm doing this project. Like it would be really like, but I'm having all this stuff came up as it came closer to the photography date. I started feeling like I, I was actually getting sick. I got sick a couple times and my whole body was saying no. And I went to my therapist and I talked to her about it. And we came up with the fact that with where, with what's arising in my own story, which is this level of not feeling safe um, in my body and a level of not feeling safe ever, um, that it would be too much for me to be photographed at this time. So I had to step back from being photographed. So that's just my own story. And this is, there's many different stories that are happening for women in, in the project that is offering a healing space for women to explore their vulvas and their relationship to it and what that means to actually see it and to embrace it as something mm-hmm. beautiful. So what are some other um, little stories or Ooh. things that are happening with the project. Oh, I'm sure man. there's lots, but if there's oh, a gosh. couple that stand out to you. Yes. So mm-hmm. one woman who found a project in a friend's Facebook group, she contacted me. We had a phone call. Never have never met her. She told me her massive trauma of her ex-husband controlling her for 16 years and not letting her do what she wanted with her body, never having an orgasm, having just very much massive control. And she hated her body. She hated her pussy, as she said. And she Mm -hmm. hated it because of the trauma that was caused to it. Mm -hmm. So we talked for about a half hour. She was really nervous, but she said yes to the project. This past weekend, I got to meet her for the first time. And it was emotional. There was tears. There was happy tears. And she said that this before even being photographed, how healing it was. And then she told me, she's a seven-year-old daughter, she told me that after we got off the phone the first time we talked, she's like, it inspired me to ask my seven-year-old daughter, would you like to see your vulva? And she's, her daughter said yes. And she's like, I helped her hold a mirror. And I told her what to do. And I held the mirror for her. And she opened her legs and she got to see her vulva. And I kept telling her the entire time, she's beautiful, you're beautiful, you're just beautiful, don't let anybody tell you differently. And for a minute, she had shame for doing that because she thought people would think it's wrong. And I'm like, no, that's beautiful. Like, you are setting your daughter up to love love her body. Like, I think a lot of us women would have loved if our mothers did something like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it was just, it was just the most incredible thing. And she let her daughter watch her get photographed. And, and she told me that after they left the studio, her daughter said to her, mommy, you have a beautiful pee pee. And Uh while that is so uncommon for parents to do that in our society. I think that is, she is doing something amazing for her daughter. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's a really powerful story. And I think that, I mean, I would love to see how that daughter, that little girl grows up looking at her body because she's Mm -hmm. so aware of that part of her body and the beauty. I didn't have that. You know, I don't think a lot of us didn't have that. And I wonder where a lot of us would be if we were set up to love the most sacred part and then everything else. Mm-hmm. So that's, for me, that's been one of the most powerful stories. Mm-hmm. That's so. amazing. Well, I got goosebumps all over <laughs> when you're telling me that. You know, I, I grew up in a home where we were, you know, really comfortable being naked with each other. My parents were kind of a little bit more hippie in that way. And my mom, you know, encouraged me to look at myself and to see myself and to explore and to ask questions. Mm-hmm. Um, but it didn't stop the other culture, cultural, cultural things and hearing what other people had to say. And my friends, my peer group is what actually influenced me to think differently. Yeah. So it's, you know, even though we have that like really su- potentially supportive environment, you know, I think overall that helps me for sure because I pretty much all of my friends had eating disorders in high school and I didn't. And I still Mm -hmm. had this sense of like, well, I don't necessarily want to like harm my body, even though I did in later years in many different ways, but it's, that's really powerful. I I'm being reminded of this time to my naturopathic doctor, um, gave me a pap 
And during the pap, she's like, would you like to see your cervix? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I've never seen it before. And she <laughs> held a mirror up for me and I got to look at my cervix. And she, she explained to me what was in there and what was going on. And <clears throat> and I started, I started crying. I was like, it's so cute. <laughs> this little button, you know? And I was just like, wow, that's the first time in my, that was, that was last, that was two years ago. So I was 33 in my entire life that any person has been like, Hey, would you like to see what's there? And a doctor, a naturopathic doctor, you yeah. know, I was just blown away. And, I, and so when you came to me with this project and said, Hey, I have this idea. What do you think? I was like, hell yes. Because that for me to even see my cervix, you know, which is, it's all a part of that beautiful sacred space mm -hmm. was, was really powerful for me. And yeah, you know, we've talked, we've talked a lot about too, like the different names people have and how, you know, people don't even call, they say down there or, yeah. you know, they don't have a word that is like honoring their yoni. Well, I use yoni because I have a yogic background and that's what it's called in yoga term. But when I found that word, I was like, oh yeah, it's a yoni. Like it's a sacred space. Mm -hmm. So what are, what's in the, I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. Just how, um, how women have had these sort of negative associations with their, their yonis or their vulvas and how that has having them photographed. What have you seen happen having them photographed? Definitely. So one of the biggest things is that a lot of the women and I are mm -hmm. starting to realize when they're being photographed that this is the first time many of us are being looked at or vulvas are being looked at in a non-sexual and clinical way. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, this is the first time we're all, because I'm going to be photographed by a fellow photographer who's also being photographed by me. She, you know, we, we are, we've all only probably been looked at in a sexual and clinical way. And now me and my camera are looking at you in a non-judgmental, beautiful, artistic way. And so that's been a really powerful realization for a lot of the women. Um, and then another, you know, and the women aren't going to see their photographs till next, early next year. But, you know, I'm getting people t telling me, wow, just being photographed alone is making me more aware of that area. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's like, a, it's like getting photographed becomes their jade egg, right? Because the right. jade egg is kind of supposed to make you more aware of there. And I mean, and other things, but it's kind of amazing because I mean, there have been some women where I did have to give an anatomy lesson, you know, mm -hmm. because they don't know a part of their body. And so I've been asked to tell, what, can you tell me what's what? And while that's so humbling and because that's got to be so vulnerable, but this is the reality again. Um, but just getting the messages from people saying, I felt amazing, I felt worshipped, because I do send a post-photography post questionnaire, um, just seeing the responses and how people feel so healed already and having seen the image, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's exciting, you know, mm -hmm. and I feel like the reveal is going to be in a very emotionally charged evening, but all positive. Mm -hmm. so. I love how, you know, I've noticed how, you've been saying over and over again how emotional this whole process has been. And it's been emotional for me and it's been emotional for these women. And I think that really, I really feel that speaks to how much emotion is tied up with our vulvas that has not been expressed, mm -hmm. that we have been wanting to seen as some, be seen as something not sexual and not clinical, that we have been sort of storing all this, you know, energetic, physical, emotional, trauma and or just discomfort or pain in our vulvas to now be able to address that and have a really safe, sacred space to address that is so, so powerful. Mm -hmm. So powerful. And the emotion really speaks to how we as women are emotional beings. Mm -hmm. And to be able to see I imagine there will be lots of tears on the reveal <laughs> night <laughs> just because we will see it as something really beautiful mm -hmm. and it'll be seen as what it actually, to me, it really feels like this project is like honoring what the vulva actually is, yes. that it isn't, that it, that it is sexual, that it is beautiful, that it is a place of birth, mm -hmm. that it is all these things, yes. and it's not just one or the other and should yes. be seen as one or the other. Yes. I mean, I had a revelation like a couple weeks ago where I'm like, I'm doing this pro 
project place of all humankind and the, and the portal to bliss you know and i'm like but i'm like well i sound crazy i don't know but that's how i feel about it you know mm -hmm. because whether you decide to give birth to children or not we are all mothers to something mm -hmm. we bleed we bleed blood you know and that's that is the essence of life and so i just feel like i feel like ancient societies they bow down to the woman's figure they bow down to the bull that they knew the value and the and the, the you know, how sacred it was and I just feel like our over sexualized society has just taken away from that. And now we're just this walking sexual object. And I feel like n there's never enough art like this to put it back in front of people in a really beautiful way. And um, I will say another thing, another thing I have to say is there's been four or five women who have been on their periods during the photography and a couple of women who had yeast infections. Mm -hmm. And I just, that's, you know, just another blip, but it's, you know, this is meant to be a thing where it shows the beauty of the vulva, but what we go through as women, because I don't feel we are allowed to talk about it in society. And I just love the fact that these women are being fearless and like, this is what I got. And this is what needs to be a woman. I'm going to do it anyway. So, um, mm -hmm, it's just mm -hmm. another blip about yeah. some of stuff. Yeah, right. Because all of, you know, I think one of the reasons why the vulva gets shamed or hidden or not wanting to be taught or controversial is because the stuff that we go through as a women, whether it be yeast infections, whether it be a period mm -hmm. that's really intense and really uncomfortable, it, it, they're all these uncomfortable things. Our vulva is so sensitive and mm -hmm. these really intense things can happen and really affect that that life force feeling like anything mm -hmm. when we're feeling discomfort in our vulvas or in our wombs and that whole area it really does knock us off our whole life yes. <laughs> I find you know when there's imbalance there for whatever reason it really does affect the rest of our life in a really profound way. Um, so I think that's beautiful that, you know, women are just showing up like, this is what's going on right now. I'm just showing up as me. This is me. This is all the stuff that's going on. And those things, you know, do get shamed, like yeast infections. Who wants to talk about that? You know, they're so uncomfortable and so messy and so, you know, just horrible. And there's all these, uh, or bladder infections, anything like that. Mm -hmm. there, there's, all mm -hmm. these, there's all these associations that, oh, if you have something wrong with your vulva, then you have done something wrong to exactly. yourself. Or you had someone do something wrong to you. Or you're dirty. Yeah. Or you're, you should be shamed. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and to just know that, like, you know, I remember once I had broken up with someone and I, I got a horrible yeast infection right after. And I went to my, I went to my acupuncturist and I told her what was going on. And this acupuncturist, she was amazing. She worked on many different levels. And she basically told me, she's like, your yeast infection is just your, just your vagina and cleansing that past relationship. And I was mm. like, wow, <laughs> well, I didn't have, like, I would have never even thought of it that way. And I would have just thought about like, oh, it's like, you know, at the time I felt disgusting that I had mm -hmm. one and, um, but she said, you know, it's a, just a way of cleansing. And, and that was so profound for me to like make that shift that like, oh, this doesn't have to be a gross, disgusting thing, even though it's so uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, but it was just my body doing some cleansing. And again, it's that association thing that anything that is imbalanced in our mm -hmm. vaginas or in our vulvas has to be something that's wrong versus just something that's coming into balance or, or our bodies addressing certain things in there that need to be addressed. All right, are we back? <laughs> we're back and we're recording still. Okay, so for those of you <laughs> that, uh, I'm not sure how I'll edit this, but I'll try and edit that, that part out. The Wi-Fi just shut down for a second there. 
Um, so yeah, anyways, let's, I feel like we're at a good spot now to sort of get into um, the details of the project and how people can get involved and mm -hmm. sort of what the trajectory is. You mentioned the reveal and the documentary and, and all those different things. So how are, how can people be involved or support the project or help spread the word mm -hmm. or, you know, I think the biggest thing right now we have, I have so many women to photograph and that's amazing. So I don't need any more volunteers to photograph, but what we need right now is funding. That's the biggest thing because I still have to print the images, ideally frame them. Um, we do have a reveal space. Um, as of right now, we are scheduled to reveal on February 17th at the Clinton Street Theater in Southeast Portland. Um, there's no time and tickets and stuff like that are to be determined. Um, ideally, I would still like to change spaces because it is a pretty expensive menu. It will cost me about $1,000 for one day. So that's why money is like the biggest thing right now because this project won't, won't finish unless I have the funding to do what I need to do. Um, you know, I mean, just sharing our website or GoFundMe, um, any of those things is what we're asking. Um, we're also going to probably be doing some fundraising soon, little uh, women's gathering survey circles. Um, so I'm open to suggestions or whatever people have, you know, donating supplies. Um, right now, I need to figure out how to build a wall to display all the images because right now the theater just has a stage. So if anybody has extra art walls for galleries, things like that, I mean, donations for that would be awesome. And if people know how to print photography, if they'd be willing to print, you know, 40 something vulvas, um, because believe it or not, that's another controversial thing. There's only certain labs I can go to that would be willing to print this because it can be seen as pornographic. So uh, fortunately I have a lab here in Portland that's willing to print, but they're expensive. So, um, so things like that can be a huge help. Mm -hmm. Great, and we're gonna put all of this in the, in the show notes and the links. The GoFundMe is GoFundMe slash The Volva Art Project. The website is thevolvaartproject.com and it is a, because it's so controversial, anything that you can feel that you would love to give to this mm -hmm. is gonna help in such a huge way because it's been really challenging. Like our Katie said, she's applied for grants, she's applied for lots of different things, and people are saying no because it's controversial and or seen as pornographic and or seen as sexual, which all those things are absolutely not true about this project. And so even if it's $5 you have, there's a $5 option on the GoFundMe page. And I just ordered a bunch of Lola stickers. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there's little give me back or um, takeaways when you donate on the GoFundMe page. So you are giving and or you can just give. Um, and we are going to be doing a retreat at some point this winter or fall where we will be focusing on our vulvas and the beauty that they are and, and doing some ritual and ceremony and women's circle around that. And that will be with Arcady and myself and another woman, Sophia Traeger, who we interviewed a few days ago or a few weeks ago. Um, she's also been a big part of the project as well. So we'll be hosting the retreat and actually a few more amazing women who are stepping up, who want to be supportive of women in the process of loving their vulvas. So I just really want to thank you, Arcady. Um, oh, and we're also going to put Arcady's information about her boudoir photography mm -hmm. up there as on the show notes as well. So if you're in the Portland area or in the Pacific Northwest, um, you're more than, more than welcome to get a hold of Arcady and have one of those sessions. It's definitely in my to-do list for the next, yes, <laughs> for the next little while. And also Arcady would love to come talk about the project. So if you have a Facebook group or any sort of community that you feel would benefit from her even sharing her story around the vulva and how and the, how the project is supporting healing and just have her talk about it. She's really open to talking about this um, topic and this, you know, controversial mm -hmm. 
thing that we have around yeah. our vulvas. So please feel free to contact Arcadia about mm -hmm. that as well. And there's a handful of women who are totally willing to be interviewed. And speaking of, a bunch of us are being interviewed by a couple of newspapers this week. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, the women are definitely wanting to share their stories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're all about sharing story here, as you all know. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks again, Arcadia, so much. Is there any last thing that you'd like to say before we go? No, just thank you for listening. And um, just at least all to ask is look at the website. You don't have to do anything. Just look, be aware. And, um, and yeah, that's all I can ask. Yeah. And I'm even going to ask if you've never seen your Volvo before and go you're curious it. about it, get a mirror, get a hand mm -hmm. mirror and go look at it and just yep. do that womb breathing before, do some breathing after and just have your journal there to journal anything that's there. You know, another thing that could be really powerful if you're in a really supportive relationship you and your partner can, um, your partner can even hold the mirror up for you and hold space for you if you're in a supportive relationship. And or girl, I know um, some girlfriends have done that for each other where they've held the mirror um, up and they don't even have to see. You can position the mirror so just the woman can see. So if you need support, there's yes. lots of support out there for you. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>